Shall we one more time give thanks to God for all that God has done? Go ahead and thank him. Open your mouth and give thanks to him. That's not like him forever is on the throne, worthy to be glorified and worthy to be honored. If you're thanking God, you can do it better. Go ahead and tell God, thank you. Mighty God, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Just like others have testified, God will give you something to testify about. In the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 1, verse 25, Luke 1, 25, say, this day, thus are the Lord, dealt with me in the days when he looked on me, personalized it to take away my reproach among men. Lord, whatever looks like a reproach in my life, take it away. I say amongst what? Men. Whatever looks like a reproach, we decree today, take it away. Lord, according to your word, go ahead and prophesy that over your life. Are you speaking with authority over your life? Whatever may look like a reproach, take it away from my life in the name of Jesus. It is what you declare, God will confirm. Whatever look like a reproach, take it away in the name of Jesus. Take it away. Whatever look like a reproach, take it away in my life today. Are you speaking with authority in the name of Jesus? Everything that looks like a reproach, God should take it away from you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, that reproach is already rolled away. In the name of Jesus. Father, in this second service, get each one an encounter with your word. Let your word bring forth changes to our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, you may be seated. Give a big hand. You may be seated. <laughs> Slap your neighbor high five. Tell your neighbor, I celebrate God with you. Today is a special anointing service, but I will take a charge for about 10 minutes. Then we'll go to the anointing section. We'll wash it between the two. Please take note so I don't start doing my hands. This is a special anointing service. Before the anointing section, please listen to what I'm about to share with you. Nobody succeeds by accident. There's no accidental success. Everyone that must succeed, you must consciously work out your plan to be successful. And nobody fails by mistake. People fail because they refuse to do what it takes to succeed. In life, you must plan if you don't want to fail. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Planning is simply having a written list of arranged actions necessary to achieve your desired goal. People fail because they take action while they have not planned. You can't go too far if you're not a good planner. In planning, you have to think, you have to ponder, you have to analyze issues to see the picture you have of your future that you want to feature. In Luke 14, 28, it says, which of you intending to build a tower, sit there not down first and counter the cost whether you have sufficient to finish it. He said, which person want to build a tower? A tower is high-rise building. You can build a bungalow without planning. You can build a tower without planning. Because you have to have a structure. Otherwise, the building will not stand. And life can be likened to a tower. Which of you want to be great in the year 2024 and you don't want to plan before 2023 comes to an end? The principal tool for planning is thinking. Is what? People take time to plan for one day. They don't plan their lives. I've noticed that people don't have long-term vision. They have short-term, very myopic way of reasoning. 
You see people who never plan for wedding, for marriage, they plan for wedding of one day. If you see people want to marry, they don't plan how they'll marry. You see them, but they will be planning heavily for the wedding that is just one day. But they will not plan how they will get married and not have problems with before. You see people plan, they say, today our wedding, you will buy clothes. Then you wonder, the person does not plan how they will live as husband and wife. But they plan for the wedding. People are planning for Christmas, but they are not planning their lives. They are not planning, they will live like Christ, but they are planning to eat on Christ's day. Do you understand now? They are planning the Christmas, but nobody is planning on how to please God. I pray somebody will return back to planning. The year is coming to an end. Let me ask you a question. What is your plan for next year? You find out if I ask now, almost 90 something persons have no plan for next year. You know why? Any plan not written down is a wish, it's not a plan. I will tell you tips for effective planning. I said in the first service, you must have a great picture of the future. You must have a great picture of what? Number two is go for relevant information. Go for relevant what? If you want to plan, you must go for relevant what? Information. You can't plan without information. Get relevant facts about your dreams and goals. Oh, I want to start business. What do you know about the business? Many times we don't ask, we don't go for facts. We just say, eh, I want, to. for instance, let me give you a very practical example. If you want to start water business, water business, the most lucrative to water business is dry season. So if I'm starting water business, I have to start, by this time I have to start selling. If you sell water by June, you're not a planner because by June, rain has started falling when people don't have taste for water. Dry season is when the highest purchase for water. Is that true? So I have to have fats. I have to have what? First. Oh, I want to start business on clothes. For instance, I want to start selling, buying and selling of clothes. I have to plan to make sure I have enough stock because the highest sales come in this festive season in December. If I buy clothes in January, people will not have time because that is time they pay rent and school fees. But someone has not planned, yet you are blaming the devil. So I hear. Is that clear, sir? So I must have information. I must have what? Plan has to do with information. Plan has to do with what? So I must go on a fact-finding mission. I must go on a fact what? Mission. No one succeeds without relevant information. If you are not informed, you live a deformed life. That will not be your portion. Thank God we are going to have festive season. Everybody wants to enjoy. But also plan that next year, you pay school fees, you pay house rent. Is that clear? Glory to God. Somebody get what I'm talking about? Daniel said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. So I must get books to read on that subject area. My goal, the thing I want to do, I must have fast. I must have what? Fast on it. It's fast that makes fat. No assumption. No assumption. I want to assume that it, it will just go that way. No. You can't start a business that you don't have knowledge about. No. Many of us are not successful because we assume that we'll just do it anyhow. There's no anyhowly success. Everybody has to do what? Plan. Study to show yourself what? Approved. Second Timothy 2.15. A workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly divided in the world of truth. So I hear. You have to plan. You have to what? Plan. Now, we've not said university, but if I tell you I have a deep plan for university, which I can't divulge to anybody because it's deep information. Nobody tells the secret is straight to my straight, uh, secret. I have a plan for university. How you go to what class university? No, it's not something you can read in any book. Okma, the things that make Okma Okma, not, they are not in book. True? Transformation said, is there any book? Why the first? It's from us, anybody is learning. 
that you can never excel if you don't have some extra information that others don't have. I recently know somebody who cooks food and is very sweet. She tests her ingredients to people. Huh? No. No, I tell you, I will tell you. She just said, nah, it's a crayfish, crayfish, crayfish. I was listening to a man on a world class television. They were interviewing him. He said, what, do you advise, what advice do you have for young people who want to go into business? He said, they just be very hard working. I said, if you, they said, tell us, the, the journalist was trying to ask him too. He said, just, just be hard working, hard working. I said, that all? <laughs> tell your neighbor plan. Tell yourself, I will plan. Don't go haywire and spend in December. <laughs> if you live a worse life, you're buying clothes, you're going to travel, you will enjoy your life. Not bad. But remember, next year you pay house rent. <laughs> next year you pay school fees. So my fees is that the same January in the name of Jesus, I'm believing God for a miracle. Planning, faith can never take the place of planning. Prayer can never be a substitute for planning. Don't use faith in place of planning. You pay school fees by planning. You don't pay school fees by faith. Now, ten of you you want to soak your landlord in blood, I lose your landlord. Even if it's a sinner, God did not tell you to not pay him. Don't use church to cover truth. Plan yourself. Keep your money. Buy the clothes you can wear. Don't go buy something that you know that tomorrow will affect your income. Is that true? There's a size for everybody. True? Could I tell you something? As, as well as I am, I flew with the economy, I came back with the economy. Because there was no business class on the plane. But there are some people who said never. And you don't have the money. I have. Yesterday, I came back from Shiloh with my wife. We flew economy. When we are going, we will flew economy. No, I mean, I can't. Uh, the, the plane does not have business club. But suppose they will never enter. They say, no, 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 I can't at my level. Which level are you? <laughs> are you at my level? So if you, you pass the whole road, nobody will greet you because nobody knows you. But I can afford, I can afford to chatter the whole plane. The entire plane I can say, yeah, I chatter you. But that's no wisdom. That's not what? That's no wisdom. What am I chattering the whole plane for? Am I rushing anywhere? No. So I plan my life. I've noticed people who really have money don't waste money. Except you got it by Rusa. If you really work hard for your money, you find that people work for money, they plan their money, they plan their spending. I plan the way I spend money. I don't just chop to spend money. No. No, don't think that I don't have things to do, but I plan them. So, January is coming. Plan your life for goodness sake. Don't put your person under. You come to church now, suppose you not come to church, you put them under pressure. Says, ah, my children's school fees, my children's school fees. But you just went home and come back. My children's school And the man, you worry him to a point that the man will now start judging church. The, the, the man did not become born again because of you. No, plan your life. Take your children to schools you can afford. Are you getting me now? You are binding and binding and casting out demons. Demons are not your problem. I'm telling you now, plan no. People don't plan. December is the time people spend a lot. You see people spend money. They will buy rapper that nobody's looking at them. They will wear gold that nobody wants to see them. They will, do, they will do hair that is not necessary. They will travel to places that they are not called for. Then they will come back. And I believe God for school fees. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I bind my landlord. I bind the principal. I bind the VC. I lose all of them. <laughs> I lose the principal. <laughs> How can you buy prison man? For what? Is it the, pay your school fees. Put your priorities right. Put your priorities right. Know what to do and what not to do. Say so here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? December is here. We'll enjoy our life, but also plan for next year. Right? Okay. Let me ask you a question. What are you going to do next year? You find out nothing. <laughs> I just go to work, close, come back. Is that all you do? What 
are you going to do next year? Are you getting what I'm talking about? Plan. You are, you are still young. If I tell someone, I will shock you. One of my pastors is here. And I'm very serious. I'm 61. Do you know what? I'm going back to school this year. This come here. So I'm 65. By 63 again, I have another degree. I'm going back to school. I told him, I said, and I've already told him to give me details. I'm going back to school. As it's one, you, you are what? 20 something. You don't want to plan your life in this modern time. I'm saying something, I'm going, it will affect my preaching. I told him to give me all the details. And I've got the old details. I'm going back to school. Do you like it? As 61, you, small child. You say, I'm not going to go to school again. I'm your pastor. I read like voracious, you know, I read very fast. But I still want to. Because there's something I'm, I'm still looking for. You, your own, you're, you're just here. Yeah. No, no. That's not how to live your life. Plan your life. Plan what? Plan your life. If you like, you hear. If you don't like, you leave. If you, if you pray against your landlord next year, <laughs> God will answer that prayer. He will not answer. If you like, soak your landlord in the blood. Because God will ask you that you're doing the wrong thing. You're doing the wrong thing. No, no, no. Not every prayer God answers. Think God answers every prayer? Have you not prayed that some people should die? Did they die? <laughs> it's not every prayer. Because God knows that the dead you're talking about has no meaning. Have you not prayed? <laughs> because you won't plan. You won't. You won't plan. You know, people come to church and not sleep note in their hands. Sister, my children have strength. My children's school fees is just 24, 24,000 to four of them. But the, the, the money you spent in December is over that money. So forgo one. And when the time comes, you, but you will, you will know me. I like to enjoy myself. Oh, what your papa is talking? December. I go do new hair. I go do new nails. Who won't look you now? I go make up. Oh. Ah, I go make up. If papa like let him talk, I go make up. Make up. I make up the money. Oh. <laughs> make up the make up the money. Don't use another man's money to plan. I told one of my relations, I say, You are planning with my own money. <laughs> the way he was talking, he was talking, talking. When he finished, I said, Who's, Where you won't get the money from my money that they plan? <laughs> he was talking, talking. I was not listening. I know that my money was woke. I saw this plan you have. No problem. Where do you want to get the money from? He paused. I said, my money, they take plan. <laughs> As if you gave me money. <laughs> hey. All right. Let's take worship for three minutes. So take your lift your hand and say, I will plan from today. I will not put myself under pressure. Next year will be better. My senses will come alive. Holy Spirit, help me to plan well. In Jesus' name. Amen. But on a serious note, plan your life. All right, let's worship and then we'll go to our anointing session. Three minutes. Oh, heavens, declare Hello, the glory of the risen Lord. Who can the beauty of the Lord forever forever you Oh, oh, oh. 
of God over to you at this moment. In Jesus' name, may be said. In the beginning, this anointed section, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, and the earth was without form and void. The earth was chaotic, formless, shapeless, no beauty to behold. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then the Spirit of God began to move upon the face of the waters. Everywhere darkness has beclouded your destiny. The power of the Holy Ghost roll it away right now. Yeah. And God said, let there be light. That light is not sunlight, it's the glory of God. I decree upon someone as the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes upon you, God's glory rests on you right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Whatever you anoint from this moment, the glory of God will overshadow it. Yeah. If you're a believer, say the amen like a believer. Amen. After God's glory came, he began to declare, and everything he declared, he saw. But one of the things he declared in verse 28, he said, and God blessed them. So by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, I pronounce you, and I pronounce myself, blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, in famine and destruction, you shall laugh. Job 5 verse 22. Now I decree, no matter the hardship in the land, this shall be your best season in life. When men are said there's a casting down, then thou shall say there's a lifting up. I decree the time of lifting to be for someone right now. Say my season of lifting has come. If you are saying it with faith, it will show from your declaration. He said, the righteous shall flow like a palm tree. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. I decree everything that makes you go through dryness to come to an end. That amen is for you. In Psalm 40 verse 2, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Someone who has been down by the power of the word of God. I'm speaking now. Come out in the name of Jesus. He said, brought me out of an horrible pit. You have been in the pit. Pit does not connote physical pit. It means you are down. Nothing is working. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Nothing is working. I command in the name of Jesus. Today, no matter how you have been in that pit, you are coming out if you believe it. Listen, all that Jesus did for Lazarus was to speak. He didn't go to the hand with hand to lift him out. He was in the pit of death. He spoke, and I'm speaking the same word. Pit of failure, pit of shame, pit wherever you have been down. Come out in the name of Jesus. I'm calling somebody out of that failure. If you believe it, you say amen. You are coming out of that pit right now. Pit of indebtedness, pit of shame. Everything that keeps you down, I command you to rise up in the name of Jesus. As I set my feet upon a rock and establish my going, Psalm 40, verse 2. Now rise and shine in the name of Jesus. As I rise and shine in the name of Jesus. Whatever is happening to the world, you will never be a victim of it. That amen is for you. It's an after demons and all this God came upon you from that forward. From this day, this God will come upon you. Yeah. Now hear this and hear me well. It's the Lord is that spirit. This scripture was given to me by the Holy Ghost for this service. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. He specifically gave me, he said, My son, use these scriptures to minister to them. Say the Lord is that spirit. Now. Look at it now. Not after. When? Now. The Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty means being free. Being what? Free from sickness. Free from, from addiction. Free from evil. 
Some people, every night, something will press them. Something will defile them. That means there's a demonic force trying to spoil. Anytime you want to get breakthrough, something will happen, sleep off. You just see a man come with your face and sleep with you. Don't think it's normal. It's a demonic attack. I'm not communicating with you. Takes a human face. Somebody you know, and all of a sudden you are defiled. It's satanic. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is asked, I command your liberty to be instant. Amen. Be free from that satanic oppression. Amen. You see us struggling the dream. They want to choke you to death. The spirit of God right now set you free. If you say amen, it will be done. Amen. That evil demonic serpent walk out of your life right now. Amen. That unseen husband, unseen wife lives you right now. Amen. That mama spirit lives you right now. If you are the one who has been held bound, be free in the name of Jesus. Long ago, I was ministering in the church and a woman who became born again, an elderly woman and her sisters, I will never forget. She said that for 1962, to that time, he said every night there will be an attack on her. In the world they call it mommy spirit. She said as I was ministering, she saw two hefty men walk into our room and said, we are packing our load and leaving. She said, that was the last day she experienced that satanic attack. From 1962, when I was born, till that time, at that time she was talking, she should be in her 80s, 70s, 80s by now. She said, it's a demonic attack that has tormented her for years. I don't know how long you have been held bound. Today is your day of liberty. <laughs> Today is your day of liberty. Amen. Today is your day of liberty. Amen. The chains are broken. Amen. The gates are open. Amen. You are free right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It shall come to pass in that day. That the body shall be of your shadow. shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Every yoke. Every that kept you bound, that yoke is destroyed. As I tell verse 27, it said, Thus saith the Lord, for those of you who no breakthrough since this year, <laughs> you will break through today. It said, Thus saith the Lord, as I 45, 1 to 3, to his anointed, to serve his right hand of our holy, to subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings. And to open before him the true living gates and the gates shall not be what? Shut. I decree every gate shut against you open right now. Amen. And I'll go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Whatever was not working, as I'm speaking, they begin to walk. Amen. I'll break into the gates of our cross and the bars of iron. I command the gates that were shut open in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I'll give thee the treasures of darkness. The hidden riches of secret places. That I mean, so all the blessings that were hidden, meant for you, that you couldn't get since you were born. As I'm talking now, they will release in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Israel labored for over 30 years, and in one day, God gave them the whole wealth they lost. I don't know what belongs to your grandfather, great-grandfather, your father, to you, that nothing has come to you today. Every blessing that eluded you in the past, they are released right now. Amen. If you are the one who is receiving this, I receive them. I receive them. Say it one more time. Your delayed promotion will be released right now. Amen. Your delayed appointment will be released right now. Amen. Your delayed employment will be released right now. Amen. That medical marriage will be released right now. Amen. That blessing will be released right now. Amen. Your finances will be released right now. Your blessings will be released right now. Your children are released to you right now. Receive in the name of Jesus. Now hear me well. The Holy Ghost himself will give you miracle marriages. He said, Has the Lord not made you a captain over his inheritance? Now, everyone who has been a captive somewhere, you're living as a captain. 
He said, when that's departed from you today, I'm reading first number 10. <laughs> he said, he asked me that I wanted to seek and what I found. Whatever you have lost before today, you will recover it right now. Yeah. I shared a testimony here how my iPad was missing in Berlin early this year. In Berlin, Germany. Not that they sold it, but it was missing. Missing in a way that you can never find it. There's nothing this one can make you find it naturally. Because even the police, when we told them that I just passed the security, I can't find it. They looked through their camera, they could not see the camera, the iPad. Somebody mistakenly took it. Now, the person who took it does not speak English. The iPad was off. So how does it come up? If it comes up, you can't own it because that's a password. So <laughs> that, that's how you can know the owner. It's a mystery. I just told my wife, I said, we'll, discover, we'll recover it. Don't worry yourself. The iPad will find me. Berlin. I'm already in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And then the man who took the iPad was confused. He doesn't know where to read the owner. And the iPad was off. Not that it was on. One day, the iPad from, you know when God wants to do a miracle, prove everything, just pop up. The young man who booked our ticket, his email came out. The man saw it, copied it. As he copied it, the iPad went off. To tell there's a miracle. The iPad was awful. It just popped up for him to see. It popped up. God wants to prove a point. He just copied the email. As he finished copying the email, the iPad went off. He began to look for that young man. He sending him email every day in German. So he would be seeing the email. He said, we want to play him uh, 419 or whatever you call it. So he refused to answer. But he kept, every day the person was sending him. So one time the man had wrote in English in a way that you can understand. He said, please, I'm trying to reach you. Reluctantly, now called the number from the email. The man said, that's, uh, so, so, so. The young man who put together is also aware of my iPad. He said, Daddy, I've seen your iPad. I said, how? He said, somebody has contacted me and I gave my address in London to send it to me. <laughs> we laughed. <laughs> to call long story short, the iPad from Berlin to London, London to Portagot. <laughs> Whatever you have lost, no matter how long you have lost it, today is your day of recovery. Today is your day of recovery. Amen. They stole a member's car here, a life story, and they took it to the border of Benin Republic. Change everything. Everything they change the number, change everything on the car. A Toyota Lexus. And I said, that car must be recovered. The person who stole the car was just roaming around the border. Because a word has gone forth. He has changed everything that nothing to identify on the car to know that this is the car. But miraculously, where he parked in the hotel, they stopped him and said, Bring the particulars. It's a long story. And police recovered it, contacted the owner, and sent the car back to him. Send the young man to prison. I don't know what you have lost. Today, that thing you lost will be recovered. <laughs> That thing you lost, not tomorrow will be recovered now. Amen. Including your health in the name of Jesus. He said, then shall that go on forward. I decree every form of retrogression come to an end. Amen. Stagnation is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say me, I will make progress. Amen. Say it one more time. He said, and they'll give you two loaves out of three. I decree favor to become your portion. Amen. They will salute you. Where you are despised, you'll be honored after this anointing. Amen. I said, the place where they despise you, they will honor you. Amen. Where they told you, go away, they'll tell you, welcome. Amen. Where you are rejected, you'll be accepted. Amen. If you are the one, say amen like a believer. Amen. Everything I'm talking will come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. He says, he saw us among the prophets. After this day, your position will change in the name of Jesus. Your situation will turn in the name of Jesus. God will make a wonder to your world. They say, oh, is she us among those who are getting married? Is she us among those who they gave appointment? Somebody is going to have a big testimony. In the one who says amen, you are the one to have it. In the name of Jesus. 
He said, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. Psalm 62 verse 12b. I decree enter to your wealthy place. That amen does not sound like somebody was. I declare it in the name of Jesus. In, in Egypt, Israel was in Egypt. All of a sudden, all the evil that happened in Egypt, not one affected the children of Israel. But they were in Goshen. The stench, the swarms, the poverty do not affect them. For time's sake, <laughs> if you read Exodus chapter 8, Exodus chapter 9, you see all of that. There was economic recession. The most important was economic what? There were tragic occurrences. Not one thing happened to the children of Israel. Things were bad that the Egyptians were as she was so heavy. Currency failed, the way it has failed now. But for those of you who don't know the story, Genesis 47, 15 and 27. Money failed. Money do what? Please, when money fails, don't be talking about money failure. Just talk about God exempting you. Don't be saying, how can money fail? It's not your business. Just say, God exempted me. God do what? It has been failing since. And money failed. Did you hear that? Verse 15. And when money failed. So money failure is not new. Did you hear that? And when money failed in the land of where? In the land of, the, in the land of Canaan. All the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, give us bread. For why should we die in thy presence? For money what? So money has failed. It's already failing everywhere. You hope you know. Including some countries. Your country too, money has not. So it's not new. But Israel dwelt where? Read your Bible so you get faith. Israel dwelt where? Which, where, where did the money fail? Where they dwell? As slaves so. And with a better covenant. Hope you know that. With a better... In the country... There's a way you succeed. They call your place country. They call Goshen what? Have you not seen where there's a Canaan land? Redemption camp. There are countries in country. You know, very soon, our own place, we'll call it country. And they had what? Read your Bible. And they had what? And grew and multiplied. When things were failing, now I decree, no matter how hard. Listen, listen. If you don't believe, God won't do anything. Not till about God, it's the God of miracle. But if you say, you say, this one, Papa is talking. How can he, does he even know what he's talking? I, I'm led by the Holy Ghost. Let me show you something to warn you. Second Kings chapter 7. I don't know why the Holy Ghost just took me because it's not part of my preaching. Please be careful. Walk on your heart. When I'm speaking like this, I'm not the Holy Ghost. Be very careful. Second Kings 7. Bring 1 and 2. Please look at this scripture. And I'm going to pray. And Elijah said, listen, everyone listen. I'm going to close it. And Eli then Elijah said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour, there was so much hardship, be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Who was speaking? A man of God? Then a Lord, that means the, the minister of economic affairs, whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God. He said, the man of God. And said, behold, if the Lord would make windows heaven, my distance be. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Elijah was angry. Elijah said, By this time, the man said, I beg, I am more an economic person than you. Man of God, you said that. Even if the people say it, don't mind this man of God. You're talking to it like. How can? They say it even on social media. They say, Don't mind those bush men of God. They just on their altar, open their mouth. Wah, 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 wah. We say, God was empty. We say, ah, Does Papa even know what he's talking about? I read economics. I met first class economics. My master's financial management. PhD, financial degree. Financial degree. I have all the standard of economics. Please listen. To those who believe, I'm speaking to you now. No matter the hardship in the country where you are, you will never be a victim. Let this stumble upside down in that nation. I speak over your life by the leading of the Holy Ghost. This shall be your best season since you were born. You will prosper in the midst of hardship. You have plenty. When others are saying there's lack. Jump on your feet and say, it shall be so to me. I have a covenant of exemption. It will answer to me. No recession will affect me. No recession will affect my business. No recession will affect my life. If God did in the past, I have declared with my mouth, my portion is that I will be exempted. I am blessed of God. No hardship will affect me. In the name of Jesus.
Do you believe the word of God? Yes. As you have said it, that is how it will be in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are going to pray that no matter the economic downturn, you will keep enjoying financial supplies this many days of the year and beyond. Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply all my needs. I call to Jesus the glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, no matter the economic downturn, I will keep in just supernatural what? Supplies. This is many days of this year and beyond. Pray that prayer for yourself in the name of Jesus. No matter the economic situation, I'll keep in just supernatural supplies. Open your mouth and spray over your life in the name of Jesus. I'll keep enjoying economic, no matter the economic downturn, I'll keep enjoying favor. I'll make progress. There are many days of this year and beyond. In Jesus' mighty name, serve me all that has been declared must come to pass in my life. When? Take the oil. Now in the name of Jesus, as this oil touches your head, not one word will fade in your life. Take a little and say the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Every word declared will come to pass in my favor. Now, the same anointing put a seal of touch not over your life. As this anointing touches you, Holy Ghost empower you. Put a seal of touch not to every evil, including dead and accident and evils. Arm robbers not come to your habitation. Now, anoint yourself in the name of Jesus. Begin to blast into declare blast into prophecies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. <sighs> Glory to God. Touch the key and I'll, I'll pronounce one word, which is a deep revelation. Just one key in 30 seconds. We declare your majesty, please. We proclaim. We proclaim that your name is exalted. For you reign magnificent. You rule victorious. Your power is shown. Yeah. 
take your right hand, put it here. When I say God bless you, you say the amen from your heart. That word God bless is empowered to succeed. I have deep revelation of that word. Now that God has anointed you, it was that same word that brought fruitfulness, that same word brought about prosperity, that same word brought about healing to Adam, everything. One time I said, God bless you, two children with sickle cell got healed. Even if you are, you are suffering from any terminal disease, now in the name of Jesus Christ, no movement when I'm under this kind of function, no movement. In the name of Jesus, be blessed in Jesus' name. It is done. Yeah. Give him thanks. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. And Jesus mind in him. He said repent and be baptized of the Holy Ghost. Until there is repentance. Every prayer we pray. He said, upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. So that you pour oil on you does not mean to walk. You must be born again. You must be born again. Wherever you are, you have accepted Jesus. Offer these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose to save me. With my mouth, I declare you my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. All that offer their prayers, don't sit with others, keep standing, while others take their seats.